In today's video, we are going to discuss the multiple choices you have in designing with one of the most recognizable patterns in patchwork history, the log cabin. Okay, let's build some cabins. Hello all you patchworkers. We have sure missed being with you. We are back today with one of my favorite patterns and I you know I say that a lot, but I tell you true, log cabins have more history and probably a wider variety of options in how you execute them than any pattern I'm aware of in patchwork. What I love about the log cabin is its simplicity and the fact that a rank beginner can make a successful log cabin. We're going to talk about design more than we are technique. We did an earlier video of how I recommend that you piece a log cabin block and regardless of the size of the block, the execution of the elements as they go in the machine remain the same. So we're going to post that little video for you to watch and before you actually cut and start sewing, I recommend you watch that. But in the interim, I'm just going to give you a lot of choices and things that you can do with the log cabin block. By no means does this mean I'm going to show you everything. There are jillions of books out about log cabin design and how you can piece with the log cabin. I'm fairly cut and dried in how I sew them, depending on the block I'm working on, whether it's a chevron, whether it's a courthouse step, whether it's the standard log cabin block. I pretty much cut every one of my blocks, my rails, if you will, to the exact size that is needed prior to sewing. I'm not a fan of laying down a strip and putting a bunch of things on it and cross cutting because I don't believe you get a square cabin block when you're finished. And remember, as in all things, this is just my opinion. Can you do it another way? Of course you can. This is how I recommend you do it. So the very first quilt that we're going to look at is a little block that in log cabin language, it is referred to as the chevron log cabin. And it really is a two-sided log cabin block. So it has a center square and then it's built like top right, top right, top right. So here's my center square. Then it's one, two, one, two, one, two. And what is so fun about working with the Chevron log cabin is how many options and how many designs you can do by putting these two squares kissing. You can put the these two kissing. You can rotate them in a square. I mean, the design choices, I just recommend you make a bunch of those blocks and then sit down and play with them like crayons and you can come up with a lot of designs. I would say if you went on Google and looked at how many log cabin settings there are, there's hundreds and hundreds of ways to set it. But in this little quilt, what I really did was I just had a, a few leftover Chevron log cabin blocks. Whatever size of this log cabin block was is the size I cut this square. So I just had plain squares running down through here, a Chevron log cabins, and then I did my side set triangles. Now we've covered all of that, so you should be able to kick this out without a problem at all. There is no pattern for this. This is just a what if. Continuing with the value of a Chevron log cabin, take a look at this little quilt I call lots of logs where I use nothing but the Chevron log cabin. And as I told you, I can get like X's and O's. There's way loads of great design working with nothing but that. This is a pattern that is out of print now, but we have just added it in our PDF section. And so lots of logs will be part of the project pattern set. Now take a look at the African Inspiration Chevron log cabin. Now, as you look at this quilt, it is the exact same block that is in the little um, table runner that I showed you first. What I love about this quilt, when I did the African fabric collection for the fabric company, and this is an older quilt, I don't even own this quilt any longer, but what I love is the simplicity of it, and then we had the zebra, and you can find those in Home Deck Fabric now. And if you wanted to recreate this, you could find a lion, a zebra, and it's just raw edged applique on that. And this is a project sheet that the fabric company at that time gave out for the shops that bought the fabric collection. And because they gave it away, we're gonna give it to you as well. So this little pattern will be in the free stuff for you. 
And from that little pattern, you can take the exact same size, you can bring it over to the table runner, you can make this little, make this block the same size as that block, and bingo, you got two little projects. Our uh, next project, and this is actually going to be a project sheet for you. This is from a fabric collection called Bread and Butter that we did some time ago. You'll see that there is some piecework inside. But remember all of our work we've done on the connectors. This is all done with connectors. So you don't need any other technique in case you've not made triangles or anything. The entire little cabin is done that way. And this is really a style of log cabin that just builds around row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, until that is as large as you want it. And this could be a star block that you did this exact same thing to. When I originally did this little project, it was something that went into a 16 by 20 picture frame. So your pattern is going to have some odd size top and bottom bars to it so that it fit perfectly into that 16 by 20 picture frame. Then once I got tired wagging it around in the picture frame, I thought, well, wait, I'm just gonna trim that down, throw some cornerstones on it. Everything that lives within the body of this is on your project sheet, but I then added a little bit to it on the outside. Now, take a look at how skinny these little um, rails are that go around this center cabin. If you have viewed the piecing, of how I recommend that you sew a log cabin, you'll see the value of keeping these corners because you want those 90 degree corners when you finish a row of elements. And if you aren't careful, they start kicking out and they continue to build on that. But this is a great way to use up those scraps because you don't need much of anything. And you could change, as you can see on some of these rows, I didn't even have the same fabric that went all the way around. Now we're gonna start looking at a log cabin that is built with two size rails. And that's how you get the curved effect of the 76 clam bones. Clam bones is built in a log cabin fashion with two different size strips that build the square. And then the skinny strips, as you see the way that shell builds out in the outside, that's where the fat rails are, and then the skinny rails are where the point comes down. Take a look at the wide variety of fabrics that I have used in this quilt, and you can see why it really is a scrap buster for sure, but it's also a killer design element. So if you're in the market for doing something like this, one thing I recommend when you're building a clam bones is you build a block at a time because you, each block, as you build a corner on that block, it forms a consecutive block that follows. So it's gonna be important that you work according to the pattern on this one. Here's the next project sheet we're gonna be looking at. This little quilt that I call Starflower, and it's actually built on the exact same format as clam bones, the size is a little bit different and it's built with skinny rails on one side and, and wider rails, fat and skinny, I suppose we could say. And it is this fabulous little design that starts, you can see this flower forming. I could build designs all day long, creating shapes and everything by using a thin rail and a wide rail. Remember, regardless of how what size you're sewing and which block it is, the order that you put this thing through the machine to keep those corners nice and tight are gonna yield you a really nice log cabin. The reason I wanted to share this one with you is this is the traditional log cabin block that has like dark on one side, prints on the other side. So everywhere you see black that lives underneath that little row of leaves, that is one side of a traditional log cabin block. Now, if you already own a log cabin block pattern, you can just use that and then do what I did with the leaves. I raw edge applique all those leaves, just freeform cut them. The vine is even raw edge applique, but it could be done needle turn applique. But I love the way it lays in that plain setting. And that is a setting that is often referred to in patchwork as field and furrows meaning that there are rows that run on the diagonal, and that's what would be referred to as the rows in a crop, in a field crop. And 
this is a quilt that you could just do great quilting in that dark space. The pattern lives in the African book. It is available if you would like, and we did not make this part of the package because the African book is a current book still in stock. The little quilt that lives right below it is called Congo Logs. And while it is in theory not a true log cabin block because it starts in the center, it builds around, it still falls in, in my mind, the log cabin category. And what's so fun about this is it's just two separate blocks, like block A and block B. Block A is built like skinny, wide, skinny, wide. Block B is wide, skinny, wide, skinny. So that gives you that really neat look. And this uses, or I use just a few of the patterns and then use that killer border to pick up all of those designs. This is not necessarily, you know, like difficult work. It just gives you an option of how to use your scraps, traditional or ethnic, depending on the method that you wanted to work with. This is a really sweet little quilt, which is in my collection. And this is a quilt by Donna McConnell. And she did a great book with miniature log cabin designs. And take a look at this little fella right here. Look how teeny, that's a, that's a quarter of an inch right there. Well, I'm not even sure it's a quarter. <laughs> it, may be a, it may be a scant quarter, folks, I'm not sure. But look how sweet this is. It forms a little heart and what it is, is she's used plain like lights that form the background and then here's a light and a dark and that's how you create the design. If you start looking for these things in, in patchwork, there are so many things where there are actually pictures like rocking chairs and people in rocking chairs. This can all be done with the log cabin block. And I'm sure that I bought this for a sample for the shop when I was in business because this is from the early 90s. It still, it hangs in my office and I had to pull it off the wall because it's one of my favorite little quilts. Oh wow, now take a look at this one. Same thing, log cabin built with a center, keep going around and a, Often the question comes up, how many rounds? How many ever you're in the mood to do? So typically it'll be three, four, or five rows. Once you build your center, you can stop with the dark or you can stop with the light. But look at this killer little project. And it's a little miniature quilt. This is, by the way, all hand pieced and all hand quilted, which tells you I probably didn't do it. And look at it if I just turn it a little bit. I could have created a star out of this. If I had all these little blocks laying here not sewn, this would be a really sweet little quilt. But I, I just love this. It's simple and it's nothing but two colorways and the lights. Doesn't even have a name, just mine right now. You're going to be duly impressed. Take a look at this little guy. This, I did not make this, this was a gift. And it is that simple little log cabin block, a center square, Light, dark, light, dark. Want a bigger keychain? Add another row. Want a lot smaller keychain? Make them tinier. I don't know how you get much tinier, but it, all it is is a little log cabin block that is backed and it's got a little tab tucked in and it's the sweetest little keychain. So I dug into my archives for log cabin inspiration and I think that's adorable. There's no pattern for it, folks. Just make yourself a little block and, and pretend you're making a pot holder and there you go. The last quilt we're going to look at today is the first full quilt I made from scratch. I have come a long, long way. This was way back, would have probably been in the late 80s, maybe even earlier into the 80s. Um, there was very few fabrics out and boy, I'm telling you, we struggle going light, medium light, medium dark, dark and all that stuff. So I have this one color cream as my light side and then staggered on the dark side. These are large strips. This was what was pretty appropriate back in that time frame where there were two and a half inch strips in almost every case, which is way larger than I prefer a log cabin today. But it is pieced on the machine, but it is hand quilted. 
and probably the only one I'm ever going to do. But it really is a sweet quilt. It's a quilt that just stays folded and it's folded up where if somebody, company comes and you get cold, well, there's a little quilt for you. But it goes back to the technique was the same then that it is today. But this was made, I think, before the rotary cutter came out. So back then we were tearing strips. You haven't lived until you've torn your strips and then tried to put all these little elements back together. The blocks ultimately end up square because we did a little extra work on them at the end of it to re-square them. So it's kind of a little journey. If I look at the log cabins that I have done since then, and I go back and look at the first log cabin I, that I did, it's still one of my favorite patterns. So when you decide to take on some of the log cabins, I would encourage you to have a good stash of scraps. I think that the scrappier these quilts are, the more fun they are, and they let you use up, which you all know the answer to that. It gives you an excuse to buy some more. We hope you've had fun in this little journey with us on log cabins. We thought we'd give you a little bit of a break and not overload you with technique, but give you some fun. We want you to post pictures. Make sure that if you like what you see, that you subscribe, you know, all that stuff we're supposed to do, you know, that thing. And honestly, it lets us know what you want to see. We appreciate all the comments you're making. We love it when you have questions. We do try to get, between your cameraman and myself, we try to get back, make sure we answer your questions. But if we don't and somehow we overlook it, please feel free to post it again. Tell us what you like, tell us what you'd like to see, and we'll be back soon with another fun video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.